Hi there, this is Ryan with the Pirate Observatory, and you want to get into astrophotography. Well, I want to show you how to ease into the hobby by prioritizing the order in which you purchase these items that you need. Um, and I've got some optional stuff at the end, um, so when you're all set up, you can ease into getting some more things that would greatly help your, the, res the quality of your images. I really just wanted to um, buckle down and just get, just get it out there, like what you need and how much it's gonna cost. So I assume you already have a DSLR. I started with a DSLR, so um, I'm gonna speak from that context. Um, the first thing you wanna get is a guided mount. Um, I started with the Sky Guider Pro, which is, uh, it follows the sky, but that's about it. You had to manually find your own targets. Um, if you get a guided mount, this thing came out maybe a year ago, the GTI, Skywatcher GTI. Uh, before I go any further, um, I'm wearing a High Point Scientific shirt. I highly recommend High Point Scientific. Um, they're competitive with their pricing. They do price matches and they have phenomenal support team uh, for any questions you might have about your gear. Um, you can hit them up and they will reach out to you. Even if you email them, they email back within a day typically, uh, which is awesome. They've helped me on a number of questions I've had in the past. So, um, but a GTI, Skywatcher GTI is a mount that uh, it does follow the sky, but also when you hook it up to your laptop, you can have it point directly to the target you wanna shoot. Um, this is a huge time saver. Um, when I was manually finding targets, it was a cat and mouse kind of thing, and it was really a pain. And when I finally got this thing, um, it, it made a huge difference. In fact, when I, when I, you know, when you get into the hobby and you know you want to spend more, you get a setup like this here. Um, but I got this mount uh, while I still had the Sky Guider Pro, and I stopped using the Sky Guider Pro. And this other telescope basically sat on the shelf while I was using this one. And I was like, I gotta do something. I gotta, and you know, and the GTA, GTI came out and um, it totally, totally made it so I can enjoyably run two telescopes at the same time, which was huge. Um, but okay, so you're just getting into this, you get the, the guided mount. So you can hook up your Canon camera to this with one of your maybe 200 millimeter lenses, and you can do good astrophotography with a 200 millimeter lens. Um, if you go any wider than that, uh, you're, you're looking at more like Milky Way type shots, stuff like that. It's a game changer, I'm telling you. A, guided, a fully guided mount, you control it with your laptop, um, saves you a bundle of time, and it tracks the target so that you can take five minute exposures. I, I use five minute exposures. I find that's the sweet spot uh, for, for exposure time. Uh, some people do a little less, but here's the thing you have to consider. The smaller, uh, you wanna take hours, like anywhere from five to 10 hours on a target. Uh, and so you're collecting all of these exposures. And if you're taking one minute exposures, that's a lot of storage space for all those images. So when I take five minute images and I collect, let's say 80 to 100 of those, um, it, it, that's, a, that's still a lot of storage. So you're gonna want something that can handle that much storage, like a two terabyte drive or something even bigger, you know? So um, the next thing you wanna get is get a telescope. Upgrade from that, you know, that stock lens that you have. Um, I recommend the Z73. Uh, when you talk about guided mounts, they have a weight limit. And so I got the biggest telescope possible and I like the focal length on this one. It's 430 millimeters, which is excellent for so many targets. You can perfectly frame targets where they're big enough and they take up enough of the, of the picture so that you get a quality image. If you do something a little less, like 300 some odd millimeter, those targets appear smaller you know, in your, in your frame. So there are a ton of targets. I can throw a couple samples up, but there are a ton of targets at 430 millimeters. It just looks perfect. I, I love this focal length. So I recommend the Xenostar Z73. It's a 73 millimeter refractor. It has, uh, it's a doublet. So it has two lenses in it and the lenses are specially coated. I forgot what the coating was, but uh, it allows those, 
those, uh, those colors to come in uh, much more clear. So that's, that's very important. Uh, that's something that your standard camera lenses don't have. So that's the next big upgrade. They have a thing you can connect, it's called a T-ring, and it allows you con to connect your DSLR to the telescope. And so at this point, you've gotten the mount, you've gotten the telescope, you hook up your DSLR, and you're, you're pretty ready to go. I mean, um, so the mount is uh, $640 for just the mount. You could put that on your camera tripod, but for an extra hundred bucks for $740, it comes with a tripod that is way more stable than any photography tripod I've seen. It's, this tripod is set up to hold telescopes, um, so it's very stable. I love this tripod and I'm glad I went the extra hundred bucks for this tripod. And honestly, for a hundred bucks, I mean, my photography tripod was a couple hundred bucks and it's, this thing is way better, I think. Um, stainless steel, it's, 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 um, it's just very solid. And that's really what you wanna put all this equipment on is something that's gonna be stable uh, throughout a night uh, of imaging. So um, the Z73 is going for $730 right now. Um, there are cheaper telescopes, um, but I'm trying to give you like kind of the max what you can ease into. So, you know, you get 740 bucks laying around, maybe put it on a credit card, pay it off over time. You're doing astrophotography right out the gate with a mount. Then you're ready to upgrade. You paid off that 740. You want to pay 730 for this telescope. Now you're ready to really take some serious photography and, um, and you've paid what, 14, 1470 or whatever. Um, it, this is an expensive hobby and I'm trying to show you an inexpensive build. Um, the, the grand total for this build is around $2,300 and honestly it pales in comparison to upper end stuff. But this will get your foot in the door and you will be able to take tons of pictures of so many nebulas. You can even get some galaxies. They'll be a little small in the frame, but you can definitely get some galaxies with this focal length as well. There are bigger galaxies out there, especially Andromeda. Andromeda fills the frame perfectly at 430 millimeters. And um, the next thing that's really important to get is a guide scope. The guide scope needs a guide camera. So now you've got two cameras, right? You got your DSLR, you got a guide camera. The guide camera hooks up to your laptop running the software, which goes back to the mount. What the guide scope does is it sends minor corrections back to the guide scope for any kind of discrepancies in the guiding. Um, this is very important. If you want to take five minute exposures, it might be tough to take five minute exposures without a guide scope because the mount really doesn't know what's going on. It's just kind of guiding at its at its standard pace um, but when you're talking about two axes of movement um, and it's pouring down rain we got a tropical storm coming in but uh, hopefully the microphone isn't picking that up but if you hear it I'm sorry um, the guide scope will make your tracking perfect you can take a five minute exposure with crisp stars no star trails so that's a that's a big important factor there. So the total for all that is 1720. That's not bad for getting your foot in the door with this hobby. I mean, there are telescopes that are like $30,000. So there's no limit to how much you'll pay in this hobby. So some optional things that you want to get, uh, I highly recommend a field flattener. Telescopes have this, uh, uh, refractors specifically have this problem with um, curving the stars around the outer parts of the image. And what the field flattener does is it, it, it flattens those stars out. So you get a perfect, the stars look perfect all the way across your image. Uh, without the field flattener, you'll have to do some cropping. Not a lot, but you'll have to do some cropping because you'll get some weird stars on the, on the outer parts of your image. So the field flattener is $230, um, but it's a, uh, it's when you're ready to go to the next level, that's the next thing I would get as a field flattener. The next thing I would get is the ASI Air, which is a, the ASI Air Mini in particular. That one's only $200. 
you hook up to your you hook up to it directly with your iPad. You could do it with your iPhone, but I really recommend a tablet um, to do it. You, it doesn't have to be an iPad. I use an iPad, but that computer. Uh, instead of running all these wires to your laptop and your laptop has to sit on a table, instead of that, this thing hooks up right to your telescope. Um, you will have to get special mounts for that. You'll have to dig around and see what you, how you want to mount that. Everybody's got a different solution. But this thing becomes wireless, basically. All the wires are right here on the telescope. There's nothing running to a table. You don't have to deal with a laptop or a table. So. Um, this makes a huge difference. Also, the software used, uh, Nina is the software. I'll, I'll put that in the description as well. But Nina is the software that you'll use. There are others, but I Nina's like the, the big one uh, at this time. So, um, but Nina's gonna allow you to point to your target and do your tracking and all that stuff. Um, and actually some other software you need is PhD2, uh, which manages the guiding um, so you got two pieces of software going there, but with the ASI Air, everything's in there. Everything's built in. You have one interface and it handles everything. So the ASI Air, I mean, for 200 bucks, it's going to make your life like so much more easier. You're going to be able to take your iPad and go in the house. Let's say you set up your telescope in the backyard and you're, you know, you got a fence and everything. You're not worried about it. You can go inside and, you know, see how things are going with a live stack, it'll start stacking your images live for you. So you can see how it's turning out, you know, and see if there's any guiding issues that you might need to correct. Um, I'll have a whole video on how to use the ASI air that's coming up, but that is, that is, that's a game changer, honestly. So, um, the other thing you might need is a light pollution filter. Um, there's the UHC filter, there's the CLS filter. I prefer broader band filters for my recommendation because if you go narrow band or dual narrow band, you're really limiting the type of data you're going to collect. So like, uh, for instance, the Orion Nebula, um, that Nebula, I would not do with a dual narrow band filter. There's so much other types of light and you would be excluding all of that. So the CLS filter or the UHC filter, there's a bunch of others out there. The CLS filter is the one I recommend. That's the one I started with. That thing's 160 bucks for a two inch. It'll screw right in with your image train and um, it cuts out light pollution, does not cut out moonlight. Moonlight's a whole, typically you don't want to image on moonlit nights. I don't, I don't. I mean, if the moon's out, shoot the moon, you know? But um, the CLS filter will cut out your typical light pollution from cities or if you're in a small town like I am. Um, and it brings in a lot of data, all that H alpha, all that O3, the sulfur, H beta, like all that light gets brought in with that filter and that's it. It just limits to those bandwidths that you actually want for a, uh, for a lot of nebulas. So, and it's the CLS filter seems to apply very well to other targets that are typically shot with dual narrow band. Uh, but it just, it does really well with the CLS, CLS filter anyway, cause it lets those bandwidths in anyway, like O3 and H, H alpha. So, um, things to consider. Oh, so the price for all of this is 2310. The filters 160, the ASI is 200, the field flatteners 230. It was 1720 for the GTI, the Z73, the guide scope and the guide camera. The guide scope and guide camera together is about 250. Other things you might need, um, you want to stack this stuff, unless you just want to rely on the ASI Air to do your stacking for you, you can totally do that. Um, but if you don't have the ASI Air yet, there's something called Deep Sky Stacker. That is free stacking software that lets you use your calibration frames, whole other video on that, um, and use your all your lights, all your, well, they're called lights, but all your images of the target, take all that into account and it stacks it for you. It does a pretty good job. Um, I've got some other software um, that I use for both stacking and processing, but I've got nearly a grand wrapped up in all that software. So that's, um, that's not really something for starting out, but Deep Sky Stacker is free. And then for processing, a lot of people use Photoshop or GIMP. You can use GIMP, that's what I used. Um, 
I, I have Photoshop, but I'm just, I'm just very familiar with GIMP, so that's what I used. So that's about it. I mean, it's $2,310, which is a lot, but plus tax, um, but you can ease into it in this order and um, right off the bat, getting a mount, you'll be doing astrophotography day one with whatever lenses you have, you know? Um, the telescope's gonna up your game, the guide scope's gonna up your game, the ASI Air is gonna be a quality of life improvement, um, the flattener and the filter will up your game. Um, and the last thing I would probably get, and it's not required, but is a dedicated astronomy camera. DSLRs, when they do long exposures, they tend to generate a lot of noise and you can process that out, but the less noise, the better. So I recommend, um, I've looked at a lot of cameras and I was trying to think of what to recommend for the best price. And for about 700 bucks, you can get the ASI 533 MC. You wanna get a color, camera if you go monochrome you need a whole bunch of filters and a filter changer and all this stuff it, it it ramps up the cost plus the monochrome cameras are much more expensive but the asi 533 when you're ready to get a dedicated astronomy camera um, that's a great low noise um, camera that's a really good camera and it doesn't have amp glow and some of this other stuff like the asi 294 um, the benefits of a dedicated astronomy camera, the big benefits are that they are cool. You can see some vents here. They are cooled. They have a fan and they cool the sensor. And so it greatly reduces the noise those cameras generate. Um, if you were to take a five minute exposure, so you can do a five minute exposure and it just doesn't have hardly any noise at all. So that's a big game changer, but that adds to the price. Um, considerably that's another seven hundred dollars on top of your twenty three hundred so we're looking at three grand for the whole setup here anyway i did not want to rant i wanted to give you stuff in order how much and i, I laid things out in the order you should get them based on how beneficial it's going to be for your astrophotography and again you don't have to buy it all at once i mean if you got a three thousand dollar credit card go for it you know but if you want to ease into this and you know, do 700 bucks here, 700 bucks there, 300 bucks here. You can do that, you know. Um, it's an expensive hobby. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it, it gets worse. It gets much worse, trust me. Um, but I hope that answers any questions you might have had about like, what do I need to get started? Um, you don't have to buy a whole setup. You can ease into this, you know, one thing at a time. And um, as you add stuff, you learn some more. You can, you can learn about different pieces of this hobby as you add more, you know, layers of complexity. So uh, I hope this was very helpful. Um, I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I started out with this telescope. I started out with the Skyguider Pro. I hate that thing. It always falls off. It's, that's the only gripe I have about this thing is that, that stupid little plastic thing. I started small. I've worked my way up. I still use this setup. It, this is actually my portable setup now. I've got a battery hooked up to it and everything. It's a completely wireless system. I can take it anywhere. Um, and that's excellent if you want to go to some dark sky sites. So, um, anywho, I really hope this helped you out. Um, good luck. Keep shooting for the stars and clear skies.